Welcome to Mission Generate, the podcast where we explore the power of AWS and the cutting edge techniques we use with real customers to build generative AI solutions for them. Join us each episode as we dig into the technical details, cut through the hype and uncover the business possibilities. I'm Ryan Reese, our generative AI practice lead and your host. And today I'm here with Casey and we are both real this time and not generated. So we look forward to talking to you about how Mission Generate came to be the brainchild of Casey as he had to listen to way too many of my webinars and decided, hey, what would be a great idea would be to make this into a podcast. So, so Casey, how, how many times did you have to listen to me talk before you decided, I want to be able to create Ryan's voice all the time so I can sleep at night? <laughs> Um, a lot. <laughs> it was many minutes, but you know, it was great. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and by the way, you did a good job considering that's your first time actually saying the intro out loud. I was impressed. Uh, yeah, we, we actually, you know what I took was the footage that uh, Olivia recorded of you at the Go to Market Summit. That was what we ended up using for the final audio because in between the takes, you were like making jokes and stuff, and it like made the voice a little bit more lively and dynamic. Yeah. Awesome. So, how do you produce each episode? What's your technique? Uh, <clears throat> so, I take content that we've already developed, uh, often for like a use case page or a blog or something like that. I actually feed that to an LLM as a first step, and I say, "Hey, give me about a five-minute episode," and then it it gives me something back. It's usually a little bit too jokey and not really you. <laughs> but then I, I basically pull that whole thing apart and then uh, rebuild it and try and uh, put, our, put our own spin on it, I guess. Yeah. So have you tried fine-tuning a model yet? <laughs> no, not really. I mean... <laughs> then we would have Ryan GPT. And yeah. <laughs> no longer have to go to a meeting, Casey. I'm feeling, okay. feeling the need here. 2024, that's the goal. Have you played with the LLM? You know, you said it was too jokey, and sometimes they get very verbose. Have you changed any of the features in it? Because you can change, you know, how long they are, or you can change kind of just the timber and, and things of that nature. I tried a couple different prompts to sort of uh, navigate it and see if I could get more of the feedback that I was looking for. But what I realized is that in the end, the way that it writes things, it doesn't write them as they should sound audibly. So actually, one of the biggest elements we had to change was putting back in like not ums, but those kind of like filler words that you actually use when you're talking to people out loud. And without those, it felt much too like scripted and, and sort of straight ahead instead of live and organic. Yeah. I do say um way too many times. Do you? <laughs> I, I, get, I actually don't know that about you. I get told that every once in a while. You need a better filler word, or better yet, use <laughs> a filler word. You should just listen to the podcast more. <laughs> And then I'll stop saying, um. Yeah, you can find better filler words, yeah. Oh, there you go, exactly. What's another child I have to ask Titan? Give me a better filler word for um. Yeah. Or you know. Or you, like know. you know. That's you know is one. good, yeah. yeah. But you, you're not supposed to use filler words, then you sound less professional. Well, I like being a little less professional in the podcast, so people kind of feel like we're joking around, uh, which is also hard. The humor is really hard to get across, right? That is the big, the big hard piece. Yeah, we're working with another customer that will probably come to an episode soon that has that exact piece in it. Really? Where we're trying to recreate a celebrity's voice and their mannerisms, and it's exactly that piece, right? How do you do a better job with timbre and everything, yeah. and you know, excitement and emotion? Because you know, obviously, on our podcast, it's kind of. Kind of just monotone to a certain extent. There's a there's a little bit of wobble in the there's monotone. There's a little. There's a little. Yeah. But not a huge amount. Well, yeah. you know, if you're going to do this for real, you've got to really get that, that yeah. set up. Yeah. So all of the humor is deadpan at this point because that's really the only thing it can nail in terms of delivery. Um, but so you know, how are you going to solve that problem, Ryan? <laughs> How that is a work in progress problem. right now <laughs> with Ben and Max trying to, to figure out that. Okay. I mean, there, there's some cool uh, models that come out constantly to explore. There's a system out there that we're kind of looking at as well called El from Elvin Labs that mm. seems to be able to do a, a similar thing of creating somebody's voice from, from previous voice, but you know, we haven't played with it enough. And we have talked to some customers, right? You know, 
uh, content localization is a big deal. Right? Sure. And so with Magellan TV, obviously we're doing content localization on um, you know all of their documentaries. And in a documentary, it doesn't matter, right? Because in a documentary, you're just trying to relay content. You're just trying, you know, you can use summarization and all that to, to relay the, mm -hmm. the content. But once you start going to things, you know, like Netflix, when they do localization and all that, mm. they're in a whole different boat because yeah. now you have to add the emotion, right? Now you have to look at how can I keep the comedic timing, right? How can right. I rewrite a joke into, you know, something that's going to be another joke in a, a different language? Well, that sounds right? impossible. <laughs> You know, I know they're working on it. I mean, we're yeah. not, you know, but documentaries are easy. Yeah, maybe the lower <laughs> lower bar of all of those. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Categories. Don't want to say it's easy because it's not easy. We've, we've spent months of, yeah. of work to get it done. But yeah, it's easier than than that problem. But it's yeah. definitely definitely something we're looking at and you know going to to be trying to build out as we go because you know that content localization is a key feature, and when you look at it. There aren't a huge number of models out there that will do somebody else's voice, right? When you look at Amazon, they have a service called Poly, and Poly just has X number of, of speakers. And often, for many of the languages, it's just male and female. Mm -hmm. Some languages have more, some have less. And so you end up, you know, what are we going to do for companies that want to transcribe or want to translate into other languages, right? You, right. you know, and, uh, there's two voices. But you have four people talking in a documentary. <laughs> That's not going to work very well. <laughs> so it is a yeah. it is a project we're working on, you know, to, to try to solve that issue. Huh. That's cool. So as a season two, are we going to be able to tell better jokes to each other? Maybe. <laughs> it depends on people's humor and whether they're better jokes. But I'm waiting to see when you translate everything for global reach Ooh. versus U.S. reach. <laughs> So Casey, how many more episodes in this season? Are you going to do seasons? Or are you just going to tough it out and just make one every week? Uh, I'm definitely not going to tough it out. <laughs> I'm not that tough. Um, we'll probably wrap up sometime in January. I really want us to at least get some of the bigger topics through before we finish. Like, I want to do Ragnarok for sure at this point. I think that would be really interesting for everybody to hear. So. Everyone needs to know about Ragnarok. <laughs> By the way, could you tell us about Ragnarok? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as we've been working on Gen AI projects, you know, you kind of start seeing patterns. And for several of our customers, we've developed, you know, an architectural pattern that we call Ragnarok. Um, you know, we like the name, obviously big Marvel fans, and so <laughs> having, having that name is cool. The RAG in RA is for RAG, right, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Then the NA is, you know, kind of the, the complex piece where you're using neoteric agents, right? So that's a thinking agent where it's able to start doing a little bit more than just, hey, I'm going to prompt the system. And then the rock part, you know, is the back end of bedrock, right? So this, this is, you know, using RAG with agents on bedrock. So we're pretty excited by that solution for, for a bunch of customers. Yeah. It seems like that is an approach that we found is going to have a lot of flexibility for the customers that we're starting to have walk in the door in terms of what they need for capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at it, you know, a lot of people are still on the fence of what's best, right? Do I use RAG or do I use try to fine tune, right? And fine tuning becomes complicated because a lot of people just don't have a lot of documents, right? So you mm -hmm. can't get a super great fine-tuned system going while if you use RAG and you only have a few documents, you know, it's only searching in that document space. And so you can get a lot better answer and, you know, reduce hallucinations versus just asking the model itself. So it is definitely a first step for everyone on that path into, uh, you know, Jet AI. That's awesome. I uh, I think you just gave me like a, a starting prompt for an episode. <laughs> I think I can get a lot of mileage out of that. Well, there's a lot of other cool prompts that can use the models just themselves, right? Like we have a company that works with Mission, um, you know, on our resale and cost ops, who's an IT company, and they just use, you know, Titan straight out of the box. Well, actually, I think they use Claude B2 out of the box, where it is, they're asking, because they do IT support, on-site support, and people are like, hey, my HP blah, blah, blah printer has a blinking light, right? So when they call in, that guy just types into, yeah. into, the, into bedrock, hey, I've got a, a blinking light, how do I fix it? Wow. And you know, it'll pop out you know, really good steps because you know, all these different models essentially took all the different 
books and you know the manuals. all the manuals and everything else. You know, they wow. were striving for any content in order to train their model. Who would have thought in 2024 we'd never have to read a manual again? We're truly living in the future now. Who even read the manual to begin with? I, <laughs> I did <say>. not. <laughs> Ryan, I just want to say it's a pleasure to actually finally talk to you, the human being, Ryan, on our podcast for the first time. Well, Casey, appreciate you having me live <laughs> on the podcast instead of generating me this time. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Mission Generate, the podcast where we explore the power of AWS and the cutting edge techniques that we use for generative AI. I hope you found this informative on what we do to make this podcast. And if you really want to do it for yourself or you want us to do it here at Mission, feel free to reach out and we can help you build your own podcast. Have a good night, good day, wherever you are. Bye. <laughs>